Hello everybody on It's a God Thing group. Uh, my name is Kim Bloomer and I'm good friends with Jeannie Thomason who runs this group. And um, she and I have for years together done a podcast called Animal Talk Naturally and we run an online school in animal naturopathy together. And I'm saying all this so you can understand I do have a background in health and, and particular natural health, but I'm also um, a former vet tech just like Jeannie and so I have both sides and yes those transfer it's very similar to what happens in human health as well very similar procedures medicine and so forth and there's a reason why I'm sharing this three weeks ago today and I thought it was appropriate that today Friday I am sharing what happened to me three weeks ago today and I'm just going to share originally what happened and then we're going to take the steps backwards to see how I came to what I did and I hope it encourages you and I hope that you are maybe inspired to look at your relationship with the Lord differently to look at um, a lot of things that we've maybe learned that isn't necessarily authentic. Um, I have no problem when I find something in my belief system that isn't holding true up against the Word of God to let go of it, although the habits of it may linger a bit. Um, I just remind myself through praising God who I am and my identity in Him. I have to put my glasses on to see who's there, and I see Deborah's there. Hi, Deborah. I'm going to, because they bug, <laughs> so I won't have them on unless I want to say hi. So three weeks ago today, you know, I'm very, um, I, I exercise on a daily basis. Let me just say that I do follow the laws of health. And some of you will know who I, what I'm talking about when I say that. Others may not, but I will explain later. And so I exercise daily. I eat a very wholesome and um, very organic whole food type of, of food. I, I'm not one to eat junk food or anything like that. Maybe once upon a time I did, yeah. But have really cleaned up my act, especially in the last several years. And it's been a pro progressive with me. So three weeks ago today, I woke up feeling kind of funny, and I thought it was odd, man. I eat so well, I do so well. I'm 60 years old, just turned 60 in August. So I know I'm, you know, really cognizant of, you know, doing more due diligence as I age, and and not <laughs> the 25 year old I once was. You could bounce off of ceilings <laughs> practically in my workouts and so forth. So I understand that. Um, so I thought, well, if I get out and get some fresh air with my dog, that should help me feel a little better. Get, you know, the stomach was feeling a little funny, and I didn't understand why. I mean, it just came on me. I thought, maybe something we ate, because we had eaten from a restaurant the day before, and it's not something we do all the time. We're, we're also very careful about what restaurants we eat in, and if they're carrying local organic um, foods, or at least at the very best, you know, um, as naturally raised foods as possible. And... I went for the walk. I didn't feel better. I use um, Young Living Essential Oils, and I was using things to support that, to support my digestive system, and just was not on. I was not on. I was off in some way. I still did my exercise, but when it came time to make the smoothies that, you know, I make these raw, um, great green smoothies for my husband and I every day, and I was just not right. He goes, why don't you go rest? I said, yeah, but I got to work. You know, I run these businesses. I got to work, and he goes, well, maybe you should take a break just a little bit of a break and see if you feel better in a couple hours I went and laid down and went out like and I don't do that during the day fell asleep when I woke up I felt worse and I a couple hours later because I had done some things to try to support I, I vomited up everything and other things it went both ways you know what I'm saying anyway it could come out it was coming out and I'm thinking I had the stomach flu However, within a few hours, um, and I'm still sleeping and waking up, and this is happening every time I wake up, I had this severe pain right over my belly button, which migrated to the left side of my body and was so severe, I thought, what could this be? Um, and it raged throughout the day and the night like that. I lost all sensation to be able to even know when I needed to go to the bathroom. It was just the pain that would alert me, and I would go and not know what was going to happen. Um, I see Jeannie here. <laughs> Sorry, Jeannie, I'm doing my glasses. <laughs> and um, so I go, you know, and I fever began, very heavy duty fever. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm down for the count with this stomach flu or food poisoning. But the pain in my side progressively got worse and worse. And my husband went to the store, I believe it was the next day. I actually slept in our spare room on a, on a, a um, what do you call it? It's not a full sofa, but the little, 
love seat sofa and as I you know with the window open so I'm burning up at this time and still letting all that cold air and everything in on me what happened was by the next day I was ending up with sinus and I'm used to having sinus and lung things that I'd had throughout my life growing up although I'd eliminated all that through my diet and lifestyle changes I had eliminated all of those issues I was no longer experiencing um, the symptoms of allergies or asthma and all of those lung issues I had with bronchitis and so forth had gone away so However, though, uh, um, I thought, well, you know, it wouldn't be abnormal, still in that mindset, for me to have, not thinking that, I'm not connecting it to the fact that I'm burning with fever and have doors and windows open, it's cold, and, and I'm letting all the cold air come in on me. My husband goes to get a thermometer because we didn't have one in the house, and when he um, took my temperature, it was up at almost 102, and then he was very concerned, obviously, and the pharmacist, of course, said, well, sounds like there's something going on, On you know, she wasn't diagnosing me, just saying, you know, that sounds like kidney stone, kidney issue. I went, what? How could that be? I looked up every symptom, I mean, I looked up everything, I looked up both on natural health and both in the medical website, what is you know what the symptoms are of kidney stone or kid, kidney inflammation and what contributes to it nothing and I mean nothing in my lifestyle contributes to it I don't drink sodas I don't eat sugar I don't do all those things that people do I don't eat junk food that's going to contribute to that it wasn't making any sense to me and yet every website and I had every not one not two every symptom of kidney stone Mind you that kidney stones only happen, happen much less in the percentage of women than they do in men. And yet I'm thinking, how could this be? Could it be I had a magnesium imbalance or something? I'm looking up all that and it's saying, no, you need that to support. In fact, they were encouraging that use to help support the kidneys through this. I'm doing everything. I'm drinking the lemon water. I just went on a four-day uh, water fast is what I did and, and fused that with lemon water, cucumber water. Uh, thanks to Jeannie, and she was supporting me through it. I wasn't calling on everybody to pray for me, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. And I'm doing, I'm drinking the cranberry water, and it, 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 nothing was sugar. It was all just pure juice with just mixed with water. And four days, finally, in the fourth day, I tried to have a smoothie and tried to um, um, eat a little bit, but man, it just wasn't happening for me. And the pain was so extreme. I was thinking, how does anybody get through that? I was using nothing for pain. And it was, and I had everything I read, most of the men in particular were going on IV morphine. And sometimes it doesn't even, that doesn't even touch the pain. It was the worst pain I've ever been through in my life. I've heard women say they'd rather have a baby than go through that. Because at least at the end of having a baby, you're going to have the blessing of the joy of that child to raise and to be with you. There was no blessing in a stone passing. I'm going days and days. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I lost the connection there for a minute, so I just shut up. I didn't keep talking. I saw that my, my connection was weak. Sorry about that. And here I am with this horrible problem, and a week in, a week in, I'm no better. I'm miserable. I'm, I'm ready to go to the hospital, and trust me, I only go to the doctor as a last resort. It's never a first choice for me. I'm 60. I'm on no pharmaceuticals. I'm on no drugs. Don't need them. Don't want them. Okay, I do everything according to God's laws of health. As I looked at my nutrition and I follow the laws of health, those of you will know, some of you will know what I'm talking about. It's nutrition and I already said my nutrition is foundational. That's for good health. I exercise daily. I said that I drink pure water. We have a, a, a water filter system that alkalinizes our water. We have that. We have, um, I know, I get fresh air and sunshine every day that I possibly can. And without sunscreen, toxic sunscreens and all of that on me. I get good rest, darken. I wear things to protect me from the electrical magnetic field that's in our all around us. Okay, so I do all those things and um, I trust God. I believe God, I trust him, and I trust in his laws of health that he put there for our, our that is the health care plan I trust him above all of the pharmaceuticals that make us sicker that they mask things and they never help us get well they just make you get more pharmaceuticals and you know I believe in the doctor for you know an extreme emergency I was to the point where I felt like this was becoming an emergency and I needed to go get on morphine which anybody who knows me Jeannie will attest to that's not what I do it would have to be extreme for me to do that hi Debbie 
I went to, um, I remember Jeannie and I having, you know, during my lucid moments is when I would research, when I would pray and I was praying and she goes, are you praying? And I said, well, of course I'm praying, but I'm not hearing from him. No sooner than I said that, then the answers came because at that point I'd reached the end of me and I was ready to hear him. And Jeannie goes, well, I don't know if this will help you, but I'm listening to Edna and I know Edna is a friend of her. She's a pastor down in Southern California and you might just listen to it. She does periscopes, Dr. Edna. Jeannie can type in the, her last name. And I, I don't know why, but I said, yeah, I'll listen to her. I was also having a conversation with my friend Bree Alter, who's a member on this group, as she was trying to make me laugh. You know, she, and she was making good suggestions just like Jeannie. And I was doing all these things. I had finally been able to get up and manage to make a smoothie and go back to bed. I couldn't eat. I was still, you know, really couldn't eat any food. I was just taking care of what I could take care of and trying to let my digestion rest so my body could attempt to heal. And I don't know why, but when I listened to Edna, she totally made sense. Why? Because Jeannie and I had watched a series of documentaries, as did Bree, back in June. From those documentaries, Jeannie found um, one of the pastors that we began listening to who led us to the one who led him to Christ. And they began to peel scales what they were sharing. Sharing truly, there's no doctrine, there's no man in there, there's no religion. It's coming from the Word of God 100%. As we begin to learn this stuff, as we begin to know this, as we begin, if I had not had those four months of prep, I don't think I would be sitting here well talking to you today. I really don't. I think things would have really gotten worse. Um, but they had prepared our minds and hearts. What Dr. Edna did was come at it from a woman's viewpoint and help me to see, oh, duh. What did she do? She simply said, you might present to me because she had a tumor in her eye on the retina in the back. And she told her doctor, doctor, I see your x-rays. You're showing me your facts, but that is not my reality. I know my identity in Christ. I am a new creation in Christ. I am healed by his stripes. And that doesn't just mean our infirmities. It means we are healed by his stripes. Jesus didn't say, go out into the world and preach the gospel only. He said, go out into the world. The great commission is to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to share the good, good news, to raise the dead. That didn't change. I don't know where the church got that it changed, but that didn't change. That didn't end with the disciples. We are his disciples. He said to do that, and he said greater things than he did would we do. I believe him. I really believe him because I experienced that in this moment. Let me get back to the moment and what happened. He... When Jeannie said that, and when she shared that, when Edna said that, I went, oh, this is a lie. The enemy's always, he can't inhabit us, but he can come at us from every which way he wants to. When we allow that, when we're not listening to and trusting him, only hearing his voice, muting the yak, yak, yak from the enemy that's constant, and only hearing God's still small voice, I praise God through those circumstances. Through every pain that hit my body, I'm... He keeps doing that. Sorry, guys. I know who I am. I am a new creation in Christ. I'm an adopted daughter in your family, Father. This is not the truth. You are the truth. And I love you. And I thank you. You are amazing. You're so awesome. Thank you for restoring me to your image. And in your image, this is a lie. And it's not true. Within an hour, those pains were almost non-existent. My body had to recover from what had happened during that week, those that that week long um, endurance <laughs> marathon of pain that I in, happened. There was no kidney stone. No, sorry, I don't know. My connection must be bad, or it happens a lot of times on that Facebook Live. I asked Jeannie to, could she please, you know, because my mind was still, I was still with fever. It was starting to go. She looked up and she had this, and we're going to have to share this graphic with you on the reins, uh, on the whole kidneys, how they are deep in the body and, the, and they come down to, right to your urethra, urethra and how they look. Because I'm going to read something from you. I decided to go look up while she was looking that up 
And we were praising God. We were just, I was like, wow, the fever started to go. I got clarity of mind. Man, it was amazing what happened when I started to praise God in that moment. And that lie was gone. Um, I'm going to read to you what I looked up. I just looked up. I did a Google search on um, what the kidney significance was in Scripture. I had always heard about the animal sacrifices, but I had not heard about this. And I did, Holy Spirit, which one do I go to? Write that one. Bible Hub. I'm going to share this with you later when I get on my computer. I'm on my iPad right now. So the kidneys, I'm going to let you read it all. But the figurative word for it was reins. And if you look at this graphic that we have, they look like reins that you on a horse. And it says um, that it was the deepest part of the body. When they would sacrifice an animal, the kidneys were the last thing to take out because it was so deep in the body. And it was hard to get to them. So down here. It says, the kidneys owe their importance in the Bible partly to the fact that they are embedded in fat. And fat is such purity that fat of the kidneys was a proverbial term for surpassing excellence. For the visceral fat was the part of the animal best adapted for sacrificial burning and hence came to be deemed peculiarly sacred. Accordingly, the kidneys with the fat surrounding them were burned in every sacrifice in which the entire animal was not consumed. Then it goes on to say down here that... Um, the position of the kidneys in the body makes them particularly inaccessible, so they were the last to be cut up, uh, cut out of the body when they were sacrificing. Consequently, they were a natural symbol for the most hidden part of a man. And to cleave, they called them reins, the figurative word for them was reins, to cleave the reins asunder is to affect the total destruction of the individual. And it also says God can sit, you know, it says it's thought of as the seat of the innermost moral and emotional impulses. So either God, it says God can be said to be far from the reins of sinners, but he's right there holding on to those reins. That's the deepest part of us. Now think about that, you guys, for just a minute. It's pretty emotional for me when I think about it, but I had been going through a whole lot of emotional stuff this year. My sister committed suicide in March, and then I lost it. I really lost it. Um... Jenny can tell you all of the stuff I went through. Nearly lost myself. I didn't know that I wanted to continue in business or anything. I just was like shocked. I wasn't angry at God. I was just, why? You know, I didn't understand. I don't know why she chose that. And I've learned a lot since then. And I've gone through a whole lot of, <laughs> you know, this is why I was primed and ready to hear what God had to say to me through those documentaries and through these pastors we've been listening to. And why this happened, because I was in all this emotional turmoil, and the deepest part of me needed to be released. I needed to forgive. I needed to forgive her and let go of all of that to him so he could hold the reins of that deepest part of me, and the enemy could not claim that utter destruction. Had it been my lungs, I probably wouldn't have even listened. I would have just done what I know to do. I used a whole lot, which is interesting, of the Thieves Essential Oil Blend by Young Living and... Um, lots of it on the bottoms of my feet couldn't take anything internally lots on the bottom of my feet and I have since learned when I was at the silver retreat last week in Utah and I was able to go that it is one of those when you inhale opens and magnified they've been able to test this and prove this through studies with Dr. Ollie Win uh, Winker Winky sorry I think Winker um, he um, it expands the whole brain. The brain is engaged. My mind was open and ready to receive everything God had to share with me and teach me. And I ask you guys to consider listening to him. Put aside everything man is teaching you, everything that you could hear from anybody, and go to his word and go to him in deep reverence and prayer and listen to him because he has so much to teach us and the church isn't hearing him right now. Not in this country, all around the world, especially in undeveloped countries just not here and I would never trade this experience for anything I would never want to go through it again but it has been a major turning point in my life and I invite you to step into who you are in Christ to really understand when we put on that armor God tells us to put on the armor do you know what the armor is the armor is Jesus he is our belt of truth he is our breastplate of righteousness He's the gospel of peace. And you know the sandals that the Roman soldiers wore had like cleats in them that would dig into the ground. That gospel is walking sure and steady. He is the peace that surpasses all understanding. 
He is the helmet of salvation. We put on and we have the mind of Christ. We are seated with him in the heavenlies, not here. This is not our reality. That was all a lie. And we focus on the problems. You know what Dr. Edna said in her video? She said, stop focusing and praying on the problems. Pray on the solution. Receive the solution from the Lord. We pray the problems, they become our reality. We do it all the time. We call everybody to pray for us and all. Now we're all praying for that problem instead of for the solution and for the reality of who we are in Christ and our identity is in Him. We are restored to His image. When He said to go out and multiply, He said to go out and multiply and the image of God. That must be restored. We're not living in the power of who we are in Christ. He said he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 Come on, church. Wake up. As our, bride, our groom is coming soon. We need to be awake and aware of what's going on. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy and letting him take that from us. No. He is a defeated foe. He was defeated 2,000 years ago. He can only do what we allow him through our thoughts and not listening to the still small voice of God. God healed me and I'm restored because I believed him and not the enemy. And I pray God that you would do the same. Thank you. And I hope that you guys are compelled to go to him go to your knees pray and ask him for the discernment and the knowledge and a word of knowledge to hear him you don't have to hear me but hear him god bless you all dear sisters i love you